A big toe undergoes a lot of stress, and over the years, that stress can take its toll. Check this out. The callus was so thick and hard on this patient that the blade was unable to pass through it. So I had to use a tissue nipper first to clip off as much of it as I could, just like trimming a toenail. Now that the center is removed, you can see how thick it is. Can you imagine walking on this every day? Also had to remove some more with the tissue nippers around the edges because I didn't want to take the chance of injuring the patient with the blade and trying to remove this stuff. Tissue nippers are used to remove that hard callus and other structures of the skin and structures deeper than the skin, but not toenails or fingernails and not bone. This is the blade of the number 10 surgical scalpel used to finish the job. People ask me all the time where they can get this. And I always tell them, you should not get this. This is the same blade that's used in all manner of surgery, not just the feet. So it should not be used in untrained hands and it certainly should not be used at home. The big toe, also called the hallux, undergoes a lot of stress when we walk. Our body weight shifts through the big toe as the foot pushes off with each step. This patient has significant arthritic changes in his big toe joint. So he has limited movement in the big toe, or what we call hallux limitus. As a result, the body weight does not sufficiently process through the big toe as the foot pushes off when you walk. And what happens is that you get a lot of pressure and friction over the bone in the big toe, causing this callus. Calluses also form here often in people with bunions. As the bunion deformity moves the big toe closer to the second toe and the toe rotates in what we call a valgus position, this side gets more contact with the ground, increasing the pressure and the friction over the bone at this point. Shoes also play a role in the formation of calluses over the big toe. If shoes are too small and too tight, it increases the pressure over the bone, no matter what position the toe is in. Believe it or not, people who wear sandals and flip-flops often are also more prone to developing this problem because of the increased sliding and friction of the feet in that type of footwear. So what can be done about this issue? Here are three takeaways. Number one. Have your feet measured, get the correct shoe size. Make sure that you're wearing the proper type of shoes so that the pressure and the friction that develops on the big toe can be reduced. Number two, I am not a big fan of medicated corn and callus removers, especially in folks with diabetes and poor circulation and neuropathy. There are many products available, such as callus pads and toe sleeves, that will help reduce that friction and reduce the pressure to prevent the callus from forming. And takeaway number three is moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Dry skin has more friction and therefore makes harder skin and harder and thicker calluses. Find a good lotion or cream or shea butter or something in that family to help keep your skin healthy and supple. So if you have this problem and you've tried a number of things and a number of different products and it's not getting better, see a podiatrist. That doctor will number one, figure out why you have the callus in the first place and develop a treatment plan to one, get rid of the callus and two, help you keep it from coming back. Do not try anything sharp at home and if you have diabetes or other problems, do not try to take these things on your own. 
seek professional help. This is Kevin Jefferson, the DC Foot Doctor. Thank you very much for watching this video. Like it with a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you will know when a new video has been uploaded. Share it with your family and friends. If you leave a comment or a question, it may be featured in a future video. But most importantly, take care of your feet.